Hey everyone and welcome to my lecture on complex numbers. Complex numbers consist of a real part and an imaginary part. J here is the square root of minus 1. Here are some examples of complex numbers. There are two ways to present complex numbers, Cartesian and polar form. In Cartesian representation, each number is uniquely identified by its real part and imaginary part. Basically, this is Cartesian format. We have a real part x plus an imaginary part y. For example, here the real part is 2, an imaginary part is 2. Here is another example. The real part is 0 and the imaginary part is 3. Another example. The real part is minus 2 and the imaginary part is 0. And the last example, the real part is 4 and the imaginary part is minus 3. Here is the point. Now let's look at the polar format. In polar representation, each number is uniquely identified by a radius r and an angle theta. Radius is the distance from the origin and here is the angle. For example, 2 e to the power of j pi divided by 3. Here is the radius and here is the angle. Another example, e to the power of minus j pi divided by 4. The radius is 1 and the angle is minus pi divided by 4. Now the question is, what is the relation between Cartesian and polar format? It's obvious that they must be equivalent. There are just two different ways of presenting the same complex number. Let me clarify that. For Cartesian, we have x plus yj. For polar, we have r e to the power of j theta. If you go with Cartesian representation, here is the point. Real part and imaginary part. If you go with the polar form, here is the point, radius and angle. But it's obvious they represent the same point, but in a different way. Now let's see how we can go from Cartesian to polar form. As you may remember, for a right triangle, which means one angle is 90 degree, we have this famous formula. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now let's look at this triangle. This is x and this is y. Let me plot it again. x and y and here is r. As this angle is 90 degree, we can use this formula. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's the relation between x, y and r. Now let's find the relation between x, y and theta. From trigonometry, we know that tangent is opposite divided by adjacent, i.e. y divided by x. By applying tangent inverse, we get theta is equal to arctangent y divided by x. The relation is true when the complex number is in the first quadrant, which means the real and imaginary parts are both positive. In general, to go from Cartesian to polar, here is what we need to do. R is super easy and you can find it by this simple equation. For theta, first ignore the sign for real and imaginary parts and find this angle. As you can see, by using the absolute value, we are ignoring the signs. Let's call this angle alpha. Now, if the number is in the first quadrant, i.e. x positive, y positive, theta is equal to alpha. If it's in the second quadrant, i.e. x negative, y positive, the angle is pi minus alpha. If it's in the third quadrant, i.e. x negative, y negative, the angle is minus pi plus alpha. And finally, if it's in the fourth quadrant, i.e. x positive, y negative, the angle is minus alpha. First example, this complex number is given and the question is what is the polar representation? This is x or the real part and this is y or the imaginary part. The radius is x squared plus y squared square root. So we get square root of 2. To find the angle, first ignore the signs and calculate alpha. Arctangent 1 divided by 1. So alpha is pi divided by 4. 
Now, this complex number is in the second quadrant as the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive. So the final angle is pi minus alpha, which is 3 pi divided by 4. Next example. This complex number is given and the question is what is the polar representation? This is x and this is y. Finding the radius is very easy. Here we get 1. Let's find the angle. First ignore the signs and find alpha. Arctangent of imaginary part divided by the real part. We get pi divided by 3. The real and imaginary parts of z are negative. So the number is in the third quadrant. Therefore, the angle is minus pi plus alpha, which is minus, pi, minus 2 pi divided by 3. Okay, now let's see how to go from polar to Cartesian. To do so, all you need to do is to use Euler's formula. Euler was one of the most famous mathematicians of 18th century and probably one of the greatest in history. He was not only a mathematician but a physicist, astronomer, logician and engineer who made very important discoveries. Here's the Euler formula. e to the power of j theta is equal to cosine theta plus j sine theta. Let's try to understand this equation. I really hate to show you stuff and ask you to memorize it as I truly believe if you just memorize something, especially math. Sorry my friend, but you basically wasted your time and it's absolutely useless. Please don't do it. Never, ever. To understand Euler's formula, let's consider the unit circle. The distance between this point and the origin is 1 as we are on the unit circle. This angle is theta. So based on the polar representation, the red point on the unit circle is e to the power of j theta as the radius is 1. Now from trigonometry, we know if we draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis, this length is equal to cosine theta. And if we draw a line perpendicular to the y-axis, this is sine theta. The red point can be also expressed in Cartesian format, real part plus imaginary part. The real part is cosine and the imaginary part is sine. The thing is, both polar and Cartesian are presenting the same point, so they must be equal. The conclusion is, e to the power of j theta is equal to cosine theta plus j sine theta. That's it. Okay, let me repeat this again. To go from polar to Cartesian, all you need to do is to use Euler's formula. Example, this complex number is given and the question is what is the representation in the Cartesian format? The angle here is minus pi divided by 2. Based on Euler's formula, we replace the ex exponential function with cosine and sine. From trigonometry, we know this is 0 and this is minus 1. So here is the final answer. Let's solve one more example. This complex number is given in the polar form and we want to convert it to Cartesian. The angle here is pi divided by 4. Again, using Euler's formula, we get this. From trigonometry, we know the cosine and sine of pi divided by 4 are equal to a square root of 2 divided by 2. We have another square root of 2 here, so by doing some simplification, we get 1 plus j. Before I let you go, I want to show you two important formulas which I'm going to use in this course very often. The first one, cosine theta is equal to this. And the second one, sine theta is equal to this. The proof for these formulas is a piece of cake, super easy. Using Euler's formula, you can write this as cosine theta plus j sine theta and write this as cosine minus theta plus j sine minus theta. From trigonometry, we know this is equal to cosine theta and this is equal to minus sine theta. So if you add them up, the second terms cancel out each other and we end up with 2 cosine theta. Dividing that by 2, we get cosine theta. That's it. The proof for the other formula is very similar, so please do it yourself to practice.
Okay, that's all I want to say about complex numbers. Life is not complex, so take it easy and enjoy it. Thanks a lot for giving me your time and watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next tutorial.